Hello, my name's Howard, and you're probably watching this video because you have a Shimano Nexus or Alphine 8-speed hub attached to your bike. This video is going to show you how to remove the wheel with the hub attached from the back of the bike when you need to repair a puncture. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at what we need. We need an adjustable spanner or torque wrench, a pair of long nose pliers, and a 2mm allen key or a spare spoke. Okay, let's get going. The first thing you need to do is set the shifter to position number four. Now we're going to remove the gear change cable from the hub. To make life easier, turn the bike upside down to steady it. Stand over the back wheel and look down at the hub. There are three main parts we're interested in here. The gear change cable, the point where the cable connects to the pulley, and a small lug with a hole in it that Shimano have added. This helps you add some slack to the gear change cable so that you can remove it. Take the Allen key, or the spoke that you've got with you, and what you need to do is to push this into the hole in the lug. Push it a good way until it meets a bit of resistance. Once it's in, hold the bike steady and rotate the pulley anti-clockwise until it's pointing straight up at you. Once it's there, hold it steady. You should have some slack in the gear change cable now, and this should help you, help you remove it. Take the pair of pliers and grasp the bolt on the gear change cable with the pliers. Rotate it clockwise and then pull it towards you. You should easily be able to remove the gear change cable. It gets easier with a bit of practice. You've now done the hardest bit. Removing the gear change cable is the most difficult bit of this procedure. Now that we've removed the gear change cable, we need to loosen off the two main locking bolts that hold the hub in place. These bolts are done up pretty tight because they have to hold the hub steady and not let the axle move. To remove them, you'll either need an adjustable spanner or a torque wrench. I'm going to use an adjustable spanner. Start on the right hand side bolt and using your spanner, turn this bolt clockwise to loosen it off. Once you've loosened it, you can fully loosen it with your fingers. Repeat the procedure on the right hand side, but turn this bolt in the opposite direction. Now that we've disconnected the gear change cable and loosened off the bolts, we can remove the rear wheel completely. There are still two things holding it in place though, we've got the chain and the gear change cable cowling. The first thing we need to do is remove the chain. So stand over the back of the bike and work on loosening the wheel from the frame. If you've got vertical dropouts, like on this bike, you need to pull the wheel upwards towards you to remove it. It should slide out easily. If you have horizontal dropouts, you'll need to pull the wheel backwards and then up to remove them. Make sure the locking bolts, the coloured ones next to the main bolts, are loose enough to allow you to pull the wheel out. Now we've got the wheel out, we can actually remove the chain from the hub itself. This is where your hands get really mucky. Start with the bottom of the chain and gently slide it over the hub like so. Try not to get too much grease on the gear change cable, you have to wipe this off later. Now that that's done, you can pull the gear change cable cowling away from the hub gently, like so, and remove the rear wheel. Now that we've fixed our puncture or managed our back wheel, we need to put the back wheel back on the bike. We need to do this in pretty much the same order in which we took it off. <clears throat> With the bike upside down, slide the wheel back into the frame. <clears throat> With the little routing channel for the cable in the right position. If you're lucky enough to have disc brakes, make sure the disc is lined up and insert it into the brake itself. Once there, reattach the gear change cable cowling, slot it back into the little 
channel just there. Now that we've done this, we need to put the chain back on. So again, get your hands really mucky. Grab the chain and slide it over the hub. Gradually work it back onto the cassette. Try not to get too much grease on the gear change cable. If you do, just wipe it off. Now that we've got the chain and the gear change cable attached, we can slide it back into the dropouts. Take care that the coloured locking bolts are on the outside of the frame. Now the wheel's back in place, slide the gear change cable cowling fully into the hub so it fits fast. All that remains for us to do now is to tighten the rear bolts and reattach the gear change cable to the hub pulley. Tighten the bolts first with your hand and then, taking your adjustable spanner or torque wrench, tighten the bolts fully. Bear in mind that these bolts have to be done up very tight. Using the tool that you would use by the side of the road to remove the wheel, tighten the bolts as far as much as you can. If you tighten the bolts with a torque wrench or a wrench, you may not be able to remove them with a spanner by the side of the road, so bear this in mind. You can see here how much force is required to do them up fully. All that remains for us to do now is to reattach the gear change cable. This is a very similar procedure to when we remove the cable. Take your Allen key or spare spoke and insert it back into the lug. Again, push it all the way until it meets resistance and then pull the entire assembly around until it faces directly upwards. Slide the bolt back into the pulley and push it back into place. You shouldn't need to use pliers for this, it should just slot straight in with a bit of pressure. Now remove the spoke or allen key and you can see that the cable is firmly in place. Make sure the cable arches around rather than over the pulley. It has to run in a special channel. Make sure it's seated properly. And that's it. 